Welcome everyone to Breaking the Chain of Infection webinar featuring Jim Fleeler, the Vice President of Sales for North America and Charlotte Products. James is the Vice President of Sales and an industry expert coupled with a high level of enthusiasm, integrity, and common sense. These traits have made him a renowned speaker and trainer for local businesses, key regional players, and national corporations across North America. Welcome, Jim Fleeler. Thank you very much, Jen. Uh, thanks to everybody for participating today. Uh, we extremely uh, thank you for the opportunity to allow to reach out to you and uh, and transfer some uh, knowledge and education. Hope everybody's staying safe, your families, uh, as we go through this worldwide virus, and uh, hopefully we'll soon stop talking about that. Uh, there's a multitude of, of educational tips today for all types of facilities, uh, whether you're just new in the industry or even whether you're a veteran is, uh, as long as I've been in the industry as a matter of fact there so and today's topic is really about surrounding ourselves with the tools the processes the knowledge and the protocol to provide cleaner safer spaces is really what we're trying to achieve so Jen if you can uh, start our PowerPoint here we'll be all ready to go February 23rd 2022 Soon it'll be March. Uh, time is flying faster and faster for sure all the time, but the good news is spring is here and warmer weather and, uh, and a safer environment overall. So, so basically the first thing I really wanna talk about here is breaking the chain of infection. And, and these are powerful tools for us to all understand. And there's gonna be a, an array of information here today that's really key for every one of us. So, so at first, when you look, there has to be an infectious agent involved. And that could be a virus, a bacteria, fungus, parasites, those types of things. And obviously, if it's a stated pathogen, it's, it's, it's harmful for us for sure. So we wanna make sure that we identify what is the risk, okay? And then we wanna start breaking the chain. And you know, the first thing on the, on the slide here is stay at home when sick. Now there was a day when we weren't feeling well, we had the flu, we had a cold or whatever, you were actually required to go into the workplace and you're seeing a change in that direction now where they're asking us all to stay home when we're not, when we're not feeling well. Why do we do that, we want to lower the risk. We want to break the chain of infection, right? And make sure you're seeking medical treatment, you know, when you are sick, you know, for sure. So then you look at, okay, well, what's the reservoir? So, so the reservoir is really the contact point. So in other words, dirty surfaces, people, water, things like that, you know, if it's drinking water and it's not properly treated and things, that's a source, that's a reservoir and away we go. So we want to identify that. And again, break the chain. How do we break the chain? Effective cleaning, the disinfecting if you're in really healthcare and things like that. Sanitizing is a term used generally with food service and food processing and things. And good health and hygiene. Hygiene, a perfect example of that today is washing your hands with a good quality product, okay? So we then say, okay, well, what's the portal of exit from a human body? Well, coughing, sneezing, you know, uh, cuts, scrapes, you know, wounds on your hand that haven't totally, or your arms or anywhere uh, that haven't quite healed. So you identify that's the portal of exit. And then what do we want to do again? We want to break that chain. So number one, hand hygiene. You know, we really don't, we did not wash our hands near enough uh, pre-COVID, as a matter of fact, there's been a 250% increase, believe it or not, in the last 24 months. Personal protective equipment. If you're in an HR department these days, you've been under great stress to improve employee wellness and provide the, the preventative tools to the employees and the custodians and everybody in your, in your facilities to give them that protective equ of equipment. And then covering your cough. Still today, some people are coughing and not covering their mouth, regardless of what the method is there and things. So that's another way that you can, you can break the chain and why you need to do it, okay? Then we look at the modes of transportation, right? You know, so if we look at direct or indirect, uh, um, you know, uh, ingestion or uh, inhalation and things like that, that's a mode of transportation. Then we wanna break that chain. And again, hand hygiene, personal protective equipment, food safety, you know, cleaning, disinfecting, sanitizing. Then 
then we go to the portal of entry, which is nose, mouth, and, no and cuts and scrapes again. Another way to do it. And then you want to break the chain again. This is a whole theme of breaking the chain, hand and personal hygiene, first aid, personal protective equipment, right? And then we go to a susceptible host, right? So is any person that, uh, that is really uh, susceptible or uh, that comes in contact with another person? I know it's a lot on that slide. We're going to talk about it today. Really, the message is break that chain of infection regardless of what it is. So what does that involve? We want to talk about plan. We want to talk about the process. We want to talk about persistence. And we want to talk about products. And the two pictures you see on the screen right now, there's a Canadian version and an, and an American version. Everything that you need that we're talking about today is all the guidelines are in this brochure brochure, and it's available at charlotteproducts.com. So it's there for absolutely everybody to see. OK, you know, did you wash your hands? The importance of hand hygiene. I mean, everybody knows the absenteeism numbers and the wellness numbers and things like that. You know, the right thing to do is to have everybody washing their hands, good quality soap and doing it often. And if you're in a riskier business, whether you're in operations or processing and things like that, you certainly need to ramp that up and do it. What we've just uh, launched as well as our Enviro Solutions and our Serve Clean line of hand hygiene program built in house with us, blow molding our cartridges, exceptional quality soap, extremely cost competitive, uh, without doubt there, and, and touchless dispensers. We are not offering a manual dispenser because really uh, all the trends tell us that people don't want to touch anything in a washroom. So we really need to go touchless, you know. So it's proven that statistics in hand hygiene, they reduce the risk. There's been a 250% increase in hand hygiene. 86% of the people are more conscious about germs than prior to the pandemic. 67% of the people now wash their hands for a longer duration. Employee wellness, customer experience is a high priority now. If you're an independent business owner, you know the importance of proving to your customer that your facility is safe and it's clean, okay? And they'll dictate whether they come back to your, your business or not based on your sanitation levels, um, you, know, uh, you know, without, without doubt there. 79% of office workers believe no touch fixtures are an important feature and people now more than ever are refusing to work in an unsafe environment. So the, the really breaking the chain of infection, hand hygiene, do not underestimate the value of that, right? And here's a couple of other, uh, other tips as we go through. How can I lower the risk without any cost whatsoever to my facility. Well, everybody today pretty well has a cell phone. In fact, a lot of people have two or three of them, as a matter of fact, one for business, one for personal or whatever it may be. And if you have ever seen an ATP meter reading, which is adenosine triphosphate, okay, that's a scientific validation of, of a perfect host uh, uh, spot for bacteria and viruses to grow, they are extremely high. I mean, when is the last time we actually cleaned our cell phones. And even though they're glass lenses now, very few of them are actually push button and things like that. But that is a major area of cross contamination in your facility. They're not, uh, you know, we don't enforce that, you know, we don't encourage the cleanliness of it. We just basically look at it and say, oh, geez, it's, it's miserable and it's ugly and it's nasty looking. So maybe we better clean it. But how does that relate to con contamination in your facility? That phone touches pretty well every surface in a facility, the back of the toilet, the partition, the clean hand washing station, the counter sink, the break room sink, your desks, uh, cubicles, things like that. If you can just uh, uh, enforce a cleaning protocol in your facility alone that takes into account the cleanliness of cell phones, that's a major tip without any cost to you whatsoever, right? So, and here's some opening thoughts on bacteria. One thing you need to understand is that bacteria, all of it is not bad. In fact, a lot of it is good for you. And I'll use three examples, cheese, beer, and wine would be three that, that, uh, that basically that I have a tendency to like, as a matter of fact. And, and, and you know, you can consume those obviously in uh, moderate levels. And I mean, you're great. You know, you don't have a problem at all. But there is, and you know, it, it, there, most bacteria is actually good for us. But all of a sudden, since COVID came about, we want to nuke 
everything with high level products, dangerous, aggressive chemistries where we really have to stop and think about that because more kill claims on a label is not necessarily better, particularly if you don't have the risk, okay? The protection that your human body provides us is amazing as a general rule, it can't do everything, but, and don't underestimate the value of good quality products and procedures versus those aggressive disinfectants, okay? So how do we plan? What kind of plans do we need for our facility here? Obviously education and training, right? That's become uh, a hot point since the beginning of COVID as a matter of fact, and we have to bring all of our employees into place. And really the first place I start is what's in it for them? What's their wellness? How can we improve their wellness in the workspace and also at home? So give them a clear understanding of the key components that are involved, sustainability and a successful plan. And one thing I can tell you as a tip, if you listen to your workforce, they will give you unbelievable ideas because they generally are first line of defense. They live in the facility all day long, night long, evening shifts and things like that. And they know the areas of risk and they know the areas of improvement, okay? So things just as awareness posters and encouragement posters, I mean, covering your cough, washing your hands, those kinds of things, okay? The proper selection of chemicals and cleaning tools, they give them the tools that they need that are ergonomic, that, are, that perform very well, that are the right size for the type of facility in the square foot and the, and the actual task involved in things like that, right? And include in these plans the prevention of blood and bodily fluid exposure, right? I do a lot of webinars, a lot of seminars across the country, and there's a lot of facilities that could use some assistance adapting to a bloodborne pathogen or bodily fluid and spill, spill uh, program there because they're generally not in place very well. So one little tip there, and it all comes under really planning, right? Utilize your product specialist, us at Charlotte alone. I mean, we're available to consult with anybody anywhere just for doing business with us and things like that. There's many of those across North America. Challenge them, get them into your facility to help you. So some areas about planning. You need to have a cleaning route. You need to have a specific cleaning task that involves the hours of operation. You need to also involve in that plan priority surfaces. So in other words, higher risk surfaces. Take a template like this in the top left-hand corner, you know, red, color it red with a Sharpie, with a highlighter, whatever, and point out the risk areas. Point out the, the areas with the most traffic, with, the, with food involved and things like that. First aid, those types of things, right? Washrooms where people may be sick and things like that. Then, then back off to yellow, and that's a little less important, and also green maybe, right? So we can help you identify that. Document what needs to be done. There is a multitude of sheets we're gonna show you here today on the presentation that basically says, okay, in this room, clean these fixtures at this particular time, you know, and sign off, you know, make sure you're accountable for that. Also, don't always do writing. Okay, because visual, there are language barriers in our industry and you identify those areas by pictorial, uh, um, you know, pictures and posters and things like that. Numerical, color coded, all of those particular things, right? And know your surfaces, right? What's the low risk surface? What's a moderate risk? And what's a high risk, okay? Not all surfaces are high risk, right? You would be amazed what good quality cleaning products and the right procedures and tools will Will do versus just basically nuking everything with a high risk disinfectant. Okay, so understand that. If you need help with that, we're here to help you. Here's a pictorial that we've just put together quickly that basically says, okay, in the washroom surfaces, these areas that are circled in red, okay, are the areas that you, Mr. and Mrs. Custodian or caretaker or janitor, need to address on your cleaning shift. So I don't need any fancy words. I don't need any numbers. I don't need anything. Clearly, I can teach each one of you that these are the contact points and the risk areas that will help us break the chain of an infection. You can go above in the right-hand corner and do color coding and numerical and things like that. Whatever program best suits you. And if you need some help with some of these schematics, we're here to help you with that.
Okay, you know, here's another one that's actually a food prep area, a restaurant, the front of the house, the back of the house, the same specific thing, what product to use, where to use it, those types of things. That's pretty well as simple as you can get, but a lot of facilities don't have a plan in place. A lot of facilities still do a visual approach to it where they chase dirt and debris and staples and things like that, and they really miss those areas that are, are a challenge and can be you know, dangerous uh, to the health and wellness of the employees, okay? I mean, document what needs to be done. There are all kinds of uh, uh, bits of information and, and intelligence available from workers' compensation boards, for the Center for di from dis Disease Control, Workplace Safety and Prevention Services. I mean, you, your Google is your best friend here. I mean, here's a checklist here, that a, a pandemic checklist, a, a preventative one for, for reducing a pandemic, okay? Uh, for schools, for administrative, for K to 12, uh, you know, all kinds of different bits of information here. And if you don't know how to put a plan together, these checklists will help you dramatically. Okay, here's just some a few of the ones that we do. And again, these are available on our website at charlotteproducts.com. But office daily cleaning and disinfecting checklist, okay? Post-corona protection or coronavirus protection uh, uh, strategy. Green, green cleaning and a survey audit. Facility survey audits. Safer cleaning product uh, market survey. All of these types of things are here. So what I'm saying in a nutshell is we're here to help you. And education and the knowledge of, of, that, of that is actually critical because some people just don't know where to get help. Just depends on the facility and the audience and things like that. We're all learning together. We're all continuing to improve together. COVID has actually been a devastating affair that's gone on. But believe me, there's been a, I know at Charlotte, we've done a lot of improvements, a lot of investing, a lot of changes in introducing introduct or innovative programs uh, to help you. And that's, I guess, our learnings there have come away from that is how do we get better? How do we help you with clean, safe spaces? Okay, so then let's talk about the process. There's three critical points for cleaning disinfecting and sanitizing and that is your chemical choice right if you've been using a product since 1960 for whatever particular reason and you haven't revisited you know there's better chemistry today there's more efficient chemistry there's safer chemistry there's more economical chemistry there's there's universal chemistry that you can actually i know we have one that two products you can clean and disinfect and sanitize up to 95% of your facility without having 15 different products in there so your chemical if you haven't revisited it needs to be right then you've got to look at the mechanical component that's involved with how you use that chemical action friction turbulence time, all of those particular things. And then you've got to, when you're disinfecting, really respect dwell time. And this is where the majority of us fail. We forget to read the label or we assume we can spray and wipe a disinfectant and that is just not true. Every single disinfectant, every single label pretty well is different. If it says 10 minutes, five minutes, three minutes, one minute, 30 seconds, whatever it may be, you need to do that. You know, my tip of today, if you just follow that triangle there, you'll be in a lot better shape than you were before this session. And if that's the only thing you learned today, that's the, uh, my, my function is done, actually, because take that, invest the right amount of time and exploration in it, and believe me, you will break the chain of infection, right? You know, there's all kinds of important tips. We'll talk about that as we go along. And, you know, I know there's uh, lots of material out there about cleaning and sanitizing and disinfecting, you know, and in a nutshell, cleaning removes germs, dirt, visual debris and things, making it a little bit safer. Uh, sanitizing lowers the number of germs on surfaces that really then is deemed safe by Department of Public Health for digestion. And then disinfecting kills a certain amount of germs on the, on the surface, depending on what the disinfectant actually is claiming to do. Uh, and actually brings it to safer levels there if you follow the instructions uh, you know, carefully. Do I need to disinfect all the time unless it's mandated by infection control within the facility? No, there's merit to good quality cleaning in the processes that are involved, right? What do we wanna do? 
with this. We want to create safer spaces. We want to break the chain. We want to lower the risk. We want to stop or lower the, the levels of cross-contamination. And at the same time, there isn't anybody that isn't thinking about the impact on our, our environment these days and sustainability. And I mean, you know, what's amazing is everybody thinks when you flush something down a drain or a toilet or whatever, well, it magically disappears. And it quite honestly does not. It has to go somewhere. In fact, if it's through a septic system, sooner or later, it goes into the fields, the lakes, the rivers, the stream, the cattle, your, your livestock, eat it, then it gets processed. And guess what? It's back on your plate and you're eating it. As a matter of fact, right? You know, if it goes just into the lakes, uh, the rivers, uh, if it goes into the uh, sewage systems of things, it does not disappear. It gets treated and brought back in some cases, but some cases not. So think about everything that you're flushing down the drain. If you're taking a high level disinfectant that is designed to kill in a certain type of facility, which is high risk, and it gets flushed down through a septic system, number one, it'll slow your septic system from performing, from digesting, it'll kill all your enzymes in there, and then that risk of getting out into the environment and things like that. So let's stop and think about these things, right? And I'll be more than happy to take it offline with anybody and, cre and, and really talk to you in a little more in depth if you don't quite understand, because we don't have a, a ton of time here today. Why clean? obviously customers drive revenue you know if you've been closed or sporadically closed and open you've got to convince your customer to come back how do you keep them coming back you know there's more armchair critics out there than there's ever been today that are judging the cleanliness i mean you used to think it bad if it was bad if you were a restaurant and they were started they seen a little smudge on your knife or your fork well now if they're in the washrooms or they're seeing fingerprints they're seeing you know contaminants and waste and things like that uh, i will tell you right now if you're in the in any kind of food service industry if you don't give them a proper healthy looking space that's clean that has good odor control involved a fresh atmosphere they have choices to eat somewhere else so why clean long-term sustainable business without question and if you've got make it one tip there too make it easy for your customers and your employees to wash their hands to see your employees washing hands using alcohol hand sanitizer at the appropriate time and things like that just let people see what you've done show them that you care about them Okay, so let's talk about some sustainable thoughts for cleaning and sanitizing and disinfecting. And I sort of talked about it a minute ago, uh, pre-cleaning. It's amazing what people have actually finally started to read the label of a disinfectant because pre-COVID they generally didn't, you know, and they all of a sudden started phoning us. One of our most popular inquiries was, do I really have to pre-clean the surface before I do my disinfecting? Well, yes, you do. The label is the law. You know, do I need to use a disinfectant to pre-clean surfaces? No, unless it's mandated by infection control, you know, and let's talk about the benefits of the right good quality general purpose cleaner. Number one, it's safer and it's improved employee wellness. Less complaints, fewer issues with absenteeism. It doesn't cause eye irritants, skin irritants, respiratory issues on a general rule. It really doesn't. It's less expensive. I know your budgets are not getting bigger. In fact, they're probably shrinking or maybe staying the same if you're lucky. You know, but generally, uh, general purpose cleaners are much less money and a lower ready to use cost. They're higher dilution ratios. There's some disinfectants out there that are diluted at about one to 10. You know, a general good quality cleaner is about one to 64 or so. You know, so that's five, six times more economical. It's also less plastic in the landfill, fewer containers. Today, there's a problem with freight, right? And the high cost of freight. So let's ship less. Let's reduce your freight costs and things and make it safer for employees, right? You know, and when you are using a general, put the right GP cleaner, they'll be superior to a lot of the disinfectants because the chemistry focuses on detergency, not on disinfecting claims. So sustainability, if that's an important uh, message for your facility, you need to focus on this one and only slide here, as a matter of fact, right? When it comes to the process, you need to look at outbreaks and epidemics and pandemics, right? You know, so and when they occur, because they do from time to time, you know, SARS-CoV-2 is a perfect example, 
SARS in 2003, H1N1, I mean, I, Ebola, I could go on and on and on about them, right? You know, but when you do have that threat, you need to increase your cleaning frequency. You need to ensure that the disinfectant that you're using has the claim for that problem pathogen. And you need to ensure that the full contact time is there for that problem pathogen that it's obtained. So in other words, respecting dwell time. What is an outbreak? That's when a disease occurs in greater numbers than expected in a region, right? Common microorganisms that cause outbreaks, outbreaks, mycillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, short form for MRSA, vancomycin resistant, okay? Enterococcus uh, faecalis, right? VRE, norovirus, Norwalk virus, C. difficile, influenza. These are a couple of key words and common words, <coughs> excuse me, that you will read about C, uh, you know, and, uh, and, that, and infection control officers and environmental services will understand these words, right? Outbreaks in the news, obviously SARS-CoV-2. What I can tell you is Ebola hasn't gone away. Uh, the flu hasn't gone away. It'll be back, you know, SARS uh, version. Is this a version from 2003? I don't know the answer to that. Probably is tied in somewhere. You know, enterovirus, you know, EVD68, that was here several years ago, the swine flu. These are examples of things. What I can tell you is history repeats itself and we are not gone with, with any kind of risk of bacteria and outbreaks and things like that, right? Epidemics, when a disease spreads more rapidly, okay? A pandemic is really when it spreads globally or to a larger uh, geographical area, right? So these processes and things you need to understand, don't lose sleep over it there. Just imagine when it does come about, address your cleaning protocol and your product protocol uh, selection in your facility and you'll just do fine, you know? Uh, and let's look at an outbreak response. And this is really, I get a lot of questions is, do I need to use that high level disinfectant all the time? Look, we sell high level disinfectants, right? And, and <laughs> if you're selling, I mean, you want to sell. But what we do here is we want to sell you the right product for your facility. So we have a long term business partnership, not just a quick buck, right? Okay, so what we do is something different. We teach you to clean safely. Right. If there is a new pathogen that comes up, we want you to continue to follow your current cleaning protocol. But then at that time, depending on the risk, let's select the right higher level disinfectant based on the threat level. OK, and then we'll follow the guidelines of the local Department of Public Health and we'll revisit your pandemic response training program. And that's a key point for you. Do you have a pandemic response training program in your facility? I can't answer that for you. You can. But now more than ever, you really need to do that. So hopefully you get the points there. Uh, don't always use the highest level disinfectant or the product with the level with the most kill claims on there in 27 letter words. Really think about it and address it accordingly and seek counsel to help you there. OK, the five critical elements of disinfectant security. We've spent a lot of time on this because this really dictates what a label is, okay? And there are, if you follow these five, you will pass. If you do not follow these, you will fail. So number one, always use a registered product. Make sure you read and understand the label. And I'm gonna show you a label in a couple of minutes here, just as an example, okay? Number two, dilute properly, regardless of the delivery method or the dilution method. There's all kinds of different ones. Dilution control is a great way to save money and improve employee wellness and, thing, and guarantee good results, or at least semi-guarantee great results. Not a question of whether you need it or not. It's really a question of what uh, pro, what dispenser best suits your facility. But you can't mix uh, 1 to 512 efficiently. You can't mix 1 to 64. In fact, studies tell us that you will over mix about 25% or more if you're relying on glug glug. That means 25% more higher spend, which you can't afford these days. Number three, always pre-clean the surface. If it is with a disinfectant, because infection control mandates it, that's fine, but you can pre-clean it with a good quality cleaner and then follow up with a disinfectant or a food service sanitizer. Always respect the dwell time. 
If it says three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 60 seconds, it doesn't matter what it is, you need to follow it. If you do not follow it, you're failing, okay? And then when food contact surfaces come in place, you need to do a potable water rinse. So just take a moment and review those five critical elements. If you're following those, you will be absolutely fine. Okay, what's the ultimate goal for breaking the chain of disinfection? Choosing the level of disinfectant that you need, whether it's a low level, intermediate or high, that's important, right? Understand that the label's the law. Disinfectants are aggressive. They kill things. They're poisons and toxins as a general rule. They're there to do a job, by the way, but if you use them properly, you're in great shape. And if you don't use them properly, you've got a risk, okay? You need to consider the type of facility and the risk before selecting a product or just staying with a product forever, right? You know, because they're not necessarily good for the environment and we've talked about that, you know, and, uh, and things like that. So choose the right disinfectant, understand the labor. The, the, sorry, the label, okay? Levels of disinfectants on our website, we've broken them down to low level, intermediate and high level for you to help you out in the selection. We've given you their features and the target segments and dilutions and things like that, okay? Is what, what we've done. Excuse me, I had to take a little sip there. So uh, the, uh, and our longstanding disinfectant message and, and what's key here, is we've had this same statement for five, six, seven years. And it really is to safely remove organic matter and then sparingly, carefully, and thoughtfully apply disinfectants or sanitizers to those higher risk, high contact points, okay? That means safely removing organic matter, lowering the risk, improving employee wellness, lowering your spend, cleaner surfaces, sustainability benefits, things like that and lowering the risk of the creation of any resistant bacteria is key. If you just take this information and you run with this in your facility, you will break the chain of infection, right? PPM, measurement. I don't know how you're measuring it now, but believe me, every time you, miss a di you mix a disinfectant, you need to validate and measure where you are. PPMs, parts per million. We've given you again on the website what our products are, what the dilution ratio is, and what kind of PPM you need to have. And you need to have this, every janitor, every custodian has to have this in their cleaning cart and they need to check it throughout their shift in their facilities without doubt, okay? It's the only way you can validate that you've got the right mixture. If it is under it, go back to the closet, Empty and refresh is what you need to do. More is not better. It's not based on the number of rooms or square footage. PPM is really what you need to do, okay? Uh, without doubt there. So, so under the process as well, you need to effectively address disinfectants. In the last 24 months, we've had the global threat of, of SARS-CoV-2. We've had that rapid spread. And you know why that was done is the science tells us that it's global travel, right? You're in an airtight space capsule for 12 hours running across the planet, coming into contact with hundreds and hundreds of people. That is an inability to stop the virus, right? So all of these things we're talking about are critical to our whole global health uh, situation, not just a state or a province or a country or whatever. Anxiety, turmoil, panic, mental wellness, travel restrictions we've been faced with, the loss of revenue, operating problems, pro uh, profits, business closures, regardless of what type of business, right? The public uncertainty surrounding vaccines, there's been a lot of upheaval there, the worry, the employee wellness, you know, history repeats itself when it comes to these things too, by the way, you know, and what we were currently doing pre and mid COVID, even post is not working to the best of is there's learnings for every single one of us. Okay. But in the good news about us, any of us in the distribution business, um, sales, those types of things, uh, building service contractors, whatever, there's a rise in the interest for improvement in our industry there. And it's really about our largest focus ever. Okay. So what do we need to really do here? There's a large percentage of facilities not making the correct decisions surrounding the procedures, product selection, or the application of disinfectants, right? Pop-up companies at the beginning of COVID with a desire to make a buck selling anything uh, of any quality without a conscience or concern for wellness flooded the market. You know, we've pretty well addressed that. 
facilities purchased anything they could get their hands on, regardless of the, of, uh, you know, all with good intention, by the way. And again, there's been a dramatic increase in waste and landfill sites. Look at the mass you'll find in a parking lot of a retail store now, right? We have to do better than that. That'll break the chain, right? Future risks and challenges, and this is very important information. Together, we must ensure that we consider the proper use, selection, and application of products matching the specific needs, right? There is a short or a long-term risk of the creation of anti-resistant bacteria and immunities. And how, how does public health and science help us if we've ran out of options, right? So if you're overusing something, using it incorrectly, you've got a good opportunity to create immunities and resistance, and that's not a good situation for us to be there. So that's a future risk and a challenge, right? If you're not doing open heart surgery, processing livestock, if you don't have a risk of C. difficile or other serious pathogens, perhaps you shouldn't use that high level disinfectant. We can explain that with you offline. Education is actually great. Here's a very simple visual of a tool that is a soil virus and bacteria, they're bacteria spreader. Right? It's a single cavity mop bucket. If you're still using one, you need to replace it immediately. All of that soil and whatever it is that comes back to that bucket is easily transferred in your facility. That is the root cost. And what is the cost of a double cavity bucket? Maybe $150. I mean, and you need 10 of them, you need five of them, you need two of them, whatever. It's a very low cost, and your custodial individual will actually reduce their labor clean better, fresher, smeller, uh, smells better, the whole entire works, it'll mitigate cr the cross-contamination risk, okay? So let's talk about some delivery methods here quickly. Since COVID, we have, the market's been flooded with foggers and misters and ES sprayers and even drones. You know, we've increased the use of pump-up sprayers, which is great, <coughs> excuse me. They're all delivery methods, they're all good, but you must follow the exact label instruction on the product, okay, to ensure the end result, okay? Without question, there's, there's videos that say you need to go through a room in four minutes or you need to spray this surface, whatever it may be. The larger the mar micron, the more moisture and the longer the respect time or the uh, dwell time will be there as a general rule, but you need to validate it, okay? There are sprayers. There are foggers, there are misters, there are drones. I mean, I had a couple of people coming to me and say, I'm going to clean my hockey stadium with a drone. Is that the right thing to do? Well, no, it isn't. You're not following the instructions of the label, right? If you're ple but the only thing nice about a drone is you can come through and spray, but you and you can keep people's employees' feet for, on the ground where there's not a risk of slip and fall, but you're not following all the five critical elements of disinfectant. I'm not putting anything against the drone because it's a great mechanism, but you need, they're all great mechanisms, but you have to follow the label, okay? This pump-up sprayer is our most famous one. It's our hottest seller, very inexpensive. Don't, if you want to impress your custodial staff instantaneously today, have them start using these as opposed to trigger sprayers and, and quart bottles and, and small bottles, right? Pumps up, easy, applies the right amount of product, extends your dwell time. I mean, they're $20, $25. I mean, it's not an expensive thing. So look at those types of things, right? And persistence, when it comes to breaking the chain, you need to monitor, you need to audit right? You can do this several ways. Involve your team. There's direct, which is visual. There's indirect, which is really surveys. And then there's measurement, which is really, I'll talk about in a couple of minutes, there's several different ways you can measure the cleanliness of a surface, right? Okay. One is UV light, one's an ATP meter, PPM strips, you know, you've got visual, glow germ, you've got all of those kinds of things. And you've got PPM test strips. And I really like to talk about that for a second because they're all different. If you have bleach in your facility, there's a different PPM test strip for that than there is peroxides and quats. So make sure you're buying the right PPM paper. You need that, right? And then really, how can we help you today? You know, no longer can we rely on cleaning for appearance alone. You need to have a, a health, uh, a validation and, and resist and uh, measurement tool protocol in your facility there. We call it precision cleaning. 
because it really identifies the risk points and allows you to address and assign your labor to that task working within your labor budget. And if you know, 90% of your spend in custodial is, is directly attributed to labor. So let's address labor, right? So if we could give you a program that gives you the assessment tools, the action plan, the analytics involved, in other words, the monitoring and the validation, everything and the assurance, that's something that you probably should look at, right? And that's our OptiSolve program. It's involved our, our Pathfinder, which is our surface imaging technology. And it was, involves our SAVI, which is our analytics, our site assessment validation indicator, everything you need, okay, to assess the cleanliness of your facility. And here's how easy we can teach you. If you see the door handle on the left, it looks clean. If I look at it, once we've done our imaging, you can see it's like Doppler radar, actually yellow, red, green, things like that. It's like how heavy the rainfall is and things, if it's light green or dark green or whatever. I mean, it tells you, <coughs> excuse me, and it tells your staff exactly where they need to spend their time cleaning. Okay, a couple of other examples there for you of door handles and doorknobs there. <clears throat> okay, the severity of the risk is there. There's one, <clears throat> if you have a language barrier, you are basically, you can teach that in any particular language whatsoever on the area that you need to address, okay? There's a laptop, there's a keyboard right there. And what I can tell you, the one on the left looks clean, the one on the right obviously doesn't. We have a bio spray we spray on, we let it dry, we do our imaging, and within seconds, you've got this image there for you, and that's called our OptiSolve program. Standard operating procedures assist with that. You can see just generally, it makes the invisible visible is really what it is. Analytics for you, okay? And really, uh, it, it really addresses the precision cleaning and, uh, and really those contact areas that you should really uh, be focusing on. So your return on investment for that, validation, measurement, liability support, morale building, okay? Include improved cleaning procedures, improved training for any experience level, precision cleaning. Let's lower the cost of your cleaning program by improving the efficiency, limiting the risk of shutdowns due to cross contaminations and outbreaks. The list goes on and on and on, right? But really it allows you to provide all the analytics for corrective actions before something becomes a problem, right? So very affordable program. It's there for you. If you've got the interest, we're here there. Our products, we've sort of talked about some of them there. I mean, our website is full of these, these things. The label, right? Some education from a label. It needs to have an EPA number for the United States. It needs to have a DIN number for Canada. You can see where it's circled on the screen. And then the most important thing about a label is reading the directions for use. How long? What do I need to do ahead of time? Do I need to do a potable water rinse? Whatever it may be, all right there for you. Okay. As far as continuous education, the Charlotte app, if you want to assess a facility, if you want to understand dilution ratio, if you want to see, um, <coughs> if you want to see all kinds of cost calculators and whatever, that app is available. Our online learning, which actually complements the ISSA's program, where there's about 250 courses on there for you in all different languages and all different topics it's there our blogs are are becoming very popular and and followed and people looking for more information these are good resources for you our webinars we've done webinars since march of 2020 I don't know how many we've done. We've done a lot, I can tell you, but they're all online and they're all various assorted uh, solutions for any type of facility that's there, okay? How to clean uh, carpets, making sure that, that we've addressed it in a, in a clean way and we've addressed bacteria, how to strip and scrub floors, how to actually clean plexiglass sneeze guards. There's a whole variety in there whatsoever. And our YouTube video channel, uh, believe me, there's just as many there again, 
They're small, short little videos that give you the education that you need for a particular cleaning task. So we pride ourselves on knowledge transfer. This is a few examples, and these are no charge for you. These are available for you, right? On our charlotteproducts.com library, you can take a quick scan here. I mean, how do I, you know, what's my infection prevention program? How do I measure PPMs? What are the five critical elements of disinfectants? What's the hand hygiene program? Look, there's hundreds of bits of information on there that are available for you, right? So really in short, you know, uh, that concludes today's except for the questions there. You know, we're available for expanded counsel and knowledge, okay? Anybody in North America, in fact, anybody in the, in the, in the world, because we're a global company, right? But together we must develop innovative solutions that provide clean, safe spaces, right? And my one tip for you there really, and I've given you a lot today, hopefully you've got some lots of takeaways, but you really need to pre-clean surfaces safely, remove organic matter, and then sparingly, thoughtfully, and carefully apply a disinfectant or a food service uh, uh, sanitizer as well. So with that being said, I'll open it up for any questions. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll see the screen yet, not, or maybe, and maybe we don't have any questions, I'm not sure, but I really, on behalf of Charlotte Worldwide, wanna thank every one of you for visiting today, for listening today. We hope you found it uh, valuable and, uh, and stay safe and we'll talk soon. Okay, Jen, I'll turn it over to you. So the only question that we have at the moment is um, if we could share the PowerPoint, please. And we'd be happy to do that. Um, yes. We do have the information of the attendees. Um, however, if you want to email marketing at charlotteproducts.com, we'll be happy to share that PowerPoint with you. Uh, our first question, Jim, is what are your thoughts on antimicrobial barriers? Yeah, they, they, that's, a, that's a great question there. It's, I think it's Kimberly there. It's uh, written in that. Uh, well, first of all, what is an antimicro uh, antimicrobial barrier? That's really a, a sheet, uh, it, in most cases, a vinyl plastic sheet that really covers a surface. So a door handle, a kick plate, a push plate, or things like that. It can cover all kinds of other things as well. So really, it's a, it's a barrier. Some of them will have a silver ion technology. Some of them will have an antimicrobial treatment to them. And are they good? Yes, they can certainly help without question. Remember, uh, in your high traffic areas, and things they're great uh, but just each one of them are different some of them will guarantee you a certain amount of days or months or whatever that it's a safe surface which i don't necessarily agree with if you have an antimicrobial barrier it's a good thing it's a step in the right direction but you still need to clean them periodically uh, with your regular routine but they will lower the risk and help you break the chain of a dis of a uh, of an infection so hopefully that helps you they are becoming very popular as a matter of fact some are custom sizes some will fit certain surfaces and things like that you can google them you can find them almost everywhere and uh, but remember they need uh, cleaning as well good question kimberly thank you how can uh, some of our members or, or viewers um, join our webinar is there a, a registration that's available for the web for the webinars yeah, there is, uh, is the fact you can go on charlotteproducts.com, you can go under our webinars, and you can actually register. We're doing a bi-weekly series now. We've actually trimmed them down to about 15 minutes maximum, and it'll be general uh, topics that can really look at in every two weeks. If you can invest 15 minutes in your time, you will come out with a, with a, with a higher level of knowledge than when you came in. So it's tricks of the trade, what products to use, clean procedures, things like that. Once you register, you can watch it live. You'll get a reminder in your email to watch it live. You'll also, if you can't watch it live because of something comes up or whatever, something's more important in the day, uh, which we understand, uh, you'll get a reminder to watch it anytime you will or anytime that's convenient for you. So, so once you register, you're there, you can watch live, you can, you can watch it when you want, 
Uh, and also, don't forget, just on our, our website, you can revisit all the ones we've done for the last two years without question. So we've got a very good following of people from all across the globe uh, that watch these webinars. And you know what's the, what makes it special is when at the end of the day, somebody sends us an email and says, thank you. That's what it's all about, because you're making a difference. Another question that we have here is, um, why is cleaning with microfiber better than cotton materials? That's great. Uh, good question. Uh, if you're not, if you haven't, if you're not using microfiber in your facility, you need to do a test of that right away. There's better microfiber that can, that is available today than there was five years ago. It's more cost effective, but what does microfiber do better than cotton or generally wipers and things? And I don't wanna get into a battle with the paper, <laughs> you know, the, the, the wiper people as a matter of fact, but microfiber has a very good absorbency and grip. You know, you've heard of the Velcro hooks and things like that. Friction is the technical term for on the surface. It actually just picks up better, right? You'll have a generally a cleaner surface behind. So surround yourself with good quality uh, microfiber, surround yourself with color coded microfiber and surround yourself, make sure you adapt a good uh, launder system there. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there's a company PCS that actually manufactures a, a detergent called MicroClean, um, which, uh, which is outstanding for bringing the life of, of older and tired microfiber cloths back to as good as they can perform. So it really prolongs your investment in, in uh, microfiber. So if it's my facility, which is the way I judge uh, my decisions and my knowledge to you, I would use microfiber all day long, color coded without question. Okay. There is a, a fantastic and very informative microfiber webinar that was conducted um, earlier this year, um, and it is available on our charlotteproducts.com website under the webinar section, and it's also in our YouTube section, and it is a focus of microfiber and a little more in depth with uh, Par Ricketts, who is uh, in charge of new fiber which is uh, an outstanding product that's uh, available in North America as well. Another question we have is which type of institution was your focus um, on this presentation? Was it education, healthcare, lodging? It was really not all. It was a universal sort of uh, class of trade. I mean, uh, you know, the difference between general facilities, property management and things. I mean, you know, your, your choice of disinfectant is, is probably not a high level. Obviously, if you're in LTC facilities, if you're in healthcare, if you're in food processing, it's higher it's obviously a higher level if you're in lodging and in uh, in, uh, in hotel motel and things like that my idea is it's going to be probably intermediate as a general rule it's not really it's it, it, everybody wants to say well i need a product with a lot of kill claims well you do in certain cases there's no question but the most important factor to me is taking that product making sure it's safer, making sure that it does what it needs to do. In other words, addressing pathogens in a particular facility. But the most important thing, in my opinion, is making sure that you're following the cleaning protocol, when to use it, how to use it, when, how to mix it, respecting dwell time, potable water rinses. You know, the failure rate of people not following that is actually higher than I really care to expose today. Uh, there's room for improvement, put it that way without question. And it looks like that's all of our questions for today. So as mentioned, uh, the, this session was recorded and a recording will be sent out to each of you that have registered. Additionally, if you would like to have a copy of the PowerPoint presentation, please email marketing at charlotteproducts.com and we'll be happy to send a copy of that to you. As well, all of the resources mentioned today are available on charlotteproducts.com and it is in the document library section of the website. See, we just got greetings from Mexico here, Jen, as a matter nice. of fact. Thank you very much, Mexico. We'd like to be there right now. <laughs> It's warmer, but but with that being said, uh, if, if, in all sincerity, thank you very much for visiting us today, to spending that time. Hopefully you found it worthwhile. You can reach out to us after the fact without question. Stay safe, be well, and uh, and we'll talk soon. Thank you. <laughs>